All right, on the video, I'm sorry you can't see on Facebook, and Facebook is dark. Sun's on the wrong side of the house. But when you're watching this video to the left of me, my picture, you usually see a Bible, Holy Bible is in, written, read me. But today you have a picture of an ugly man, I, in my opinion. Notice his collar. Now, whether you like it or not, this is the 38th study of the Bible. Page 77 of 116. This man, and Lord willing, next week, the second man. If you have any Bible that is not the King James, if you have any Bible but the King James, this man, and Lord willing, the man we're going to talk about next week, is the father of the modern Bibles. The NIV, the RSV, the New King James, the and I say is all those modern Bibles. This is the father. Like we have the church fathers, not the Catholic, rarely looked at them. We have today Brooke Foss Westcott. And it's easy now to remember, well, Stalin, you talk about the West and the East. You talk about Antioch and Alexandria. Which side are we on? Remember Westcott, modern Bibles, Alexandria, West. Antioch, where they were first, first called Christians. Where our King James Bible come from? is the East. Your modern Bible is on the foundation of Westcott and Hort. And we'll, Lord willing, we'll look at Lord Hort next week. But Brooke Foss Westcott. Now you said, why did we look at the Oxford movement last week? Because this man comes out of the Oxford movement. Remember that movement in England? We want to bring everyone back to the Roman Catholic Church and we converted the priests, we converted the nuns, we had the Catholic churches switch over, we had the nunneries switch over. And at the start, there was few Catholic churches and by the end, there were many. And at this Oxford movement is in your colleges in America. It is a well-established Catholic foundation, non-profit. Well, your modern Bibles come from this man here. And Westcott. Now, now get this. He's the product of the Oxford movement. Let's get everybody Catholic. All right, let's look at your non-King James Western Alexandria Bible. And this is the foundation of the man that has your modern Bible. Not mine. Mine is the King James. Ready? He did not believe in creation. You mean from the very start of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, this man... Did not believe in the beginning God created. And God said, let there be. Let's read on. He said it was not to be taken literal. And he adhered, he glued himself, he established himself in the origin of species of Darwin. Evolution. So if I open up my non-King James Bible, RSV, NIV, PDQ, ASS, and I open up to Genesis chapter 1, the founder, Westcott, I don't believe that. We come from monkeys. That is the man of your Bible. Mr. Living Bible Holder. Mr. NIV, your father, not only is a monkey man, he believed you came from monkeys. The garbage can's over there. Throw your Bible in it, get a King James. 
He said the Bible is not historically accurate. Accurate. Listen, Scripture is prophetic, spiritual, and historic. Every piece of Scripture, is either, if it's not historic, it's prophetic. It's future tense. All the things of Israel conquering the land, Moses and, and David, did I say Moses and David? Did you know that this man, Westcott, did not believe that Moses and David were, were real men? Throw out the first five books of your Bible then. Oh, yeah, you did with, with no evolution. You did by believing in evolution. This man does not believe in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy because he doesn't believe Moses was real. He doesn't believe in David, the shepherd, and Goliath, and King David, and Bathsheba, and the warrior, and the man that brought forth Solomon and supplied all the material for the church. Westcott did not believe the Western Alexandrian Church of your non-King James Bible said David and Moses were not real. Rip out the first five books of your Bible then. I'll wait. He denied the miracles of the Bible. So when Jesus healed, Jesus turned the water into wine with the Red Sea. Well, that, the Red Sea's already thrown out. When Elijah, or Elijah, I get those two mixed up, threw the salt into the, into the pot and there was no more poison. When Elijah was, was raptured by the horses, by the raising of the dead, the, 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 the woman of Nain, her son is in, in the beer. All the healings. Rip those out of your non-King James Bible. Including the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because that's a miracle of God. That's the means of stuff. Rip it out of your Bible if you don't have a King James. Because this father of your modern Alexandrian Western church says, I don't believe in the miracle. So we have five of the books totally ripped out of the Bible, and we have all the miracles, which is primary most of the Gospels that John writes at the end of his Gospel. If we were to write everything that Jesus done, you would have track of trails and track of trails and track of trails of everything. There was more to the life of Jesus than is recorded in the Gospels, and how many more of those were miracles? And Westcar says, throw them out the window. This is your Bible corrector. This is the one that subtracts and adds and footnotes your Bible. He's an evolutionist. He doesn't believe in historic accuracy of the Bible. He doesn't even believe the Bible character. Come on, what Sunday school child has not gone? I wasn't brought up in Sunday school as a child. I didn't come really to Christ when I was 18 years old. But what Sunday school child has not heard of Moses and David, you know, David, the, the giant killer, this man says, I don't believe in it. The first day God said, let there be light. He don't believe it. That's your modern Bible. That's your Western church. There was no or will not be a second advent in Jesus Christ. At all. He's an on millennialist. And later on, we'll, we'll, We'll see that there's a shaky thing, but an odd manilius, odd manilius, ugh, I, can't, I can't say it, forgive me, is there's no second advent and no millennium. Boom. Pre-millennium, oh boy, I can't, excuse me, is when Jesus Christ is going to come after the seven-year tribulation. Jesus Christ will fix everything up. post millennialists is when man fixes everything up, when the church fixes everything up, when the Republicans fixes everything up, and then after they get everything great and we live in utopia, then Jesus Christ will come and pat them on the shoulder. This man says there's no second advent. What do you do with Revelation 19? Oh, there goes another book. Wait a minute. We don't believe in the miracles. Well, the book of Revelation is a book of miracles and a book of prophecy. 
It's going to be a miracle that 144,000 are going to survive. It's going to be a miracle that there will be Jews in the wilderness that survive. I guess you ripped the book of Revelation out. So if you got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the book of Revelation, rip them out of your non-King James Bible. Boy, now you can read your Bible through a year much quicker. But, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many of the Psalms are written by David? you got to rip those out of your Bible too now. What about Samuel? First and second Samuel that wrote about David. you got to rip those out. What about the battles where... God fought for Israel and miraculously gave victory to Israel without Israel. You got to throw those out. You got to throw Gideon out. That, that, that fleece. The two ways of the fleece. That was a miracle. You got to throw that out. This is the danger of the modern Bibles because there's the father in the modern. Again, like on Facebook, you can't see. I got his ugly mug up. You'll be able to see it when, you, when I put the video. All right. By the way, your modern Bible scholars today, you know, the ones that are in the synonaries, I said synonaries, they believe this junk. Yeah, I know countless and countless Christians that go into the synonaries, they go in with a King James Bible, and they come out with the father of this crap. Whatever, NIV, you, you get whatever letters you want. He's the father of it. This man's going to stand before God. He's not saved. He, he believes in things that cannot be merit of salvation. He's going to stand at the great white throne judgment. Boy, is he going to get the deepest, darkest hell with everybody that followed him. There are Baptist churches today with his Bibles in the, 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 the sheep's hands. And in the pastor's hands, and in the Bible teacher's hands. This man has a lot to answer for one day. You have a chance to repent. You have a chance to throw your modern Bible in the deepest part of the garbage can and, and pee on it and put kerosene on it and put gasoline on it and burn that modern Bible and get yourself a King James Bible. Open up the book of Acts chapter 7. I forget which verse is. Make sure it says Jesus and not Joshua. There's even King James Bibles out there that have been perverted. Satan is slick. Okay, what else we have? He's a follower of the Newman Oxford movement. That's what we did last week. You can get that video. His movement is that he wanted and they wanted to go back to the Roman Catholic Church. He wants me to go back to Rome. I, I can't. Listen, I was 18 years in a Roman Catholic church, St. Mary's, Star of the Sea, New London, Connecticut, April 21st. I met the Lord Jesus Christ. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I got out of the Catholic. I got into Jesus. This man wants me back. Those modern Bibles want me back. I'm supposed to go back to Bethel. I'm supposed to go back to Calvary and remember my first lo love. I ain't going back to Egypt. I ain't packing my bags, my bags for the leeks and for the and the cucumbers. I'm moving on. I'm on the upward way. When you follow this man in the modern Bibles in the Western Church, the Alexandrian, you're going back. You are in a Catholic church. And there are Baptist churches that promote all this. It's a shame. It's a shame that they don't know the dangers of those churches out there. Now, I ain't talking about Catholics. I ain't talking about Jehovah Witnesses. I ain't talking about Mormons. There are Mormons, there are Catholics, and there are Jehovah Witnesses that are saved. They're going to heaven just as much as I am. But the system of the Mormons, the system of the Catholic, and the system of the Jehovah Witnesses, and all the other denominations and non-denominations. That's what I'm talking about. Tracks for times were a series of 90 theological publications by this man. 
varying in length from a few pages to a book length, produced by members of the English Oxford Movement, an Anglo Catholic revival group from 1833 to 1841. So, this guy not only wrote books for the Oxford Movement, let's get back to the Catholic Church, but he wrote tracts. You know what tracts are? We had. Do you, 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 you want to know about the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ? You know where you're going to go to heaven. Someone says, I'm a good person. I got tracts say, you know, the good person, what a good person is. Uh, what uh, Mary's uh, Mary's commandment for Catholics? Those kind of chick publication Catholic and all that. Of all things, this man did the same thing. But he didn't for do it for Christ. He didn't do it for the Bible. He didn't believe it. He didn't believe in Christ. He did it. Let's get back to Cap. And if you can see this video again, you see his collar. He's got a collar. Ring around the collar. And again, the Bible is not to be believed. Let's go back to Rome. The Western Church. He also was a socialist. Devote. Today, oh, socialism come to, Listen, socialism is the government of the Antichrist. I say bring on socialism. Because as soon as the Antichrist, we're out of here. We're raptured out of here. I don't care we're in socialism. I don't care what kind of government. God will take care of me. If, if America fell tomorrow morning like Bap uh, uh, Babylon, God will take care of me as he took care of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Nico. But this man was a socialist. How many of you Christians out there, oh, we can't have socialism, we can't have socialism, and you got an RSV in your hands. Oh, the Democrats are for socialism. We can't have, we got to put a Republicans in. And you hold an NIV in your hands. If you hold any Bible but a King James Bible and you preach against socialism, you are a hypocrite because your father is a socialist. Fort. I mean, Westcott. Fort's next week. Your modern Bibles of Alexandria and the Western Church is a socialistic Bible by the Father. Take all the workers' money and give it to non-workers. That's his kingdom of God. Oh, they're sticking our money and they're giving it. That is the father of your modern Bible, so shut up! You don't have a right to preach and complain unless you throw your modern Bible in the garbage and burn it with the hellfire of brimstone and get yourself a King James Bible. Then you can say anti-socialism, anti-socialism. But no, no, but wait a minute. That's the government that's coming. That's the future government. You got to read and study your Bible, my friend. Socialism doesn't scare me. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go by death, but I'm definitely gonna go by rapture. I'll let God take care of me, not the government. Now he's post millennialist. He said, "Wait a minute, stop." He, he said earlier he was all millennialist. I can't say the word. Now you're saying he's post. Yeah, he teeter totters. He's a Roman Catholic. The Catholic Church will go and fight. We'll go conquer, we'll war, we'll kill Christians, we'll send uh, uh, troops into Israel, we'll fight the nation. We'll, we got the sword, we got the military, we got our own army, we got our own police, we got our own government. And when we fortify the world in Catholic, when we send uh, uh, Columbus out in the name of Catholic and we get everybody converted to Catholicism and there's a universal Catholic church all, universal, all around the world, then Jesus Christ will come and he'll bend down and kiss the Pope's feet. Don't you fool me. I've been wrong. I was for 18 years a Polish Roman Catholic. My great grandparents came over from Europe through Ellis Island to New London County. And they went to a Polish Catholic church in New London, Connecticut. Don't tell me. 
And plus, I'm a DD. I'm a doctor of divinity. Catholic Church was one of my studies to get my diploma, to get my doctorate. And I read many other books and testimonies from priests and from nuns who came out of the Catholic Church like I did and got saved. I know what I'm talking about. I've dealt with Catholics, and I know Catholics are going into hell my own family. I tried to witness to them. I tried to tell them. This man wants you back. Your Bible, if it's not King James, they want you back to the Catholic Church. Like those in the wilderness, they wanted to go back to Egypt. Egypt? You mean Alexandria? You mean the West? Yeah. So, he's also a peace activist. <laughs> Roman Catholic Church, you read Fox's Book of Monitors? On how peaceful the Catholic Church is. He belonged to the Christian. Get this, Christian. You want to hear an oxymoron? The Christian Socialist Union. That's an oxymoron. That's your modern Bible. That's your NIV, RSV, kiss my butt, D. New King James, the living, the good news. Probably the fairy tale, faggots, and, and sodomy Bible. And I don't know what sex I am Bible. That's your father. There he is. Westcott. Preaching. He preached at the Westminster Abbey, giving him an opportunity to deal with social questions. His sermons were generally portions of a series. To this period belonging to the volumes of Christus, C-H-R-I-S-T-U-S, Consumator, C-O-N-S-U-M-M-A-T-O-R, 1886. Social Aspects of Christianity, 1887. Westcott's presidency of the Christian Social Union from 1889, he was a president of the Christian Association Union did much to draw mainstream respectable churchgoers into calling for justice for the poor and unemployment in the face of the predominant last fair economic policy. We got a Judas. When did you spend that money in her for? We could have given it to the poor. That's the Judas doctor. What about the poor? What about the poor? And you tax, and you tax, and you tax, and you tax, and you tax. What about the poor? You're the one causing us to be poor. I think we should just pack up the government, send them home for about two or three years, and see how well we do. He's a pacifist. Devote. That's someone who believes in that war and violence are wrong and who refuses to take part or in support of war or join the military. That's your Jehovah Witness. No, you're a scaredy cat, Frady Pants. You're a wimp. Because the man that you don't believe in, David, was a warrior and a captain of an army. All right, so we don't believe in war. Everywhere there was a battle in the Old Testament, because we got rid of Moses' book. All right, Joshua, there were wars. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, gone. Judges, they fought wars. Take out, judge, take out judges. I don't think there's any, any war in Ruth. There was wars in first and first and second Samuel. Remove that. Well, we already did because David's in it. There's war in Daniel. There was war in Jeremiah. There was war in Ezekiel. Take those books out.
There's war in the Revelation. We already took that out. How many of the books of the Bible have we removed by this man not believing? And you hold that modern book. I'm not going to call it a Bible. You hold that modern book in your hands. Uh, I'll read my Psalms. Uh, hope it's not a Psalm of David because your father don't believe in it. Are you a military person? Thank you. If you if you're past, present, or even think about joining the military, thank you. Thank you for your service. And if you hold a non-King James Bible, you are holding a Bible of a man said, "Oh, don't go to war. Don't join the military." That would be the New World Translation of the Jehovah Witnesses. I'd be offended if I was in the military and if I fought in Afghanistan or these other places or maybe getting ready to fight uh, Russia. I don't know. Rumors of wars. We don't know if it could be. could be rumors of wars. I would be offended if I was a soldier fighting and I had in my hands a Bible by a man who would not fight. Hey, I'm not against guns. If you want to own a gun, I say get the permit, get the training, Go for it. Me? I don't feel. Now, if somebody would get, somebody would pay for the training for me and my daughter and get me a gun, I wouldn't refuse it. i said, say, okay, we'll go to class and we'll get the permit and we'll carry uh, and conceal. I don't want to spend my money on it. And I would figure, hey, God wanted me to do that. He would have somebody say, hey, we'll pay for you. I'm not against it. Get your guns. Get your ammunition. This man said no. You know King James fought wars? Social reformer. That's a modern today world. Romanism. Now listen to this. This man would hate me. Because he is against the preaching and teaching of any anti-Catholicism. Have you dealt with a Catholic? And seriously, I mean, your heart's ring. I want them to come out. I want them to come to Jesus. I really want them to get saved. This man is against you. And I've heard, listen, I'm serious about the, about the King James issue. I've heard preachers say, you can use any Bible to get saved. Are you going to use a Bible by a man who wants to put you back in the Catholic Church when you're trying to get them out of the Catholic Church into Jesus? What's wrong with that? That's like if I were to open up a car wash and you bring your car into the car wash and at the exit of the car wash, I put a big mud puddle. Here, clean your car so you can get money all over again. You see, that sounds stupid. So does the modern Bibles. Do you realize in, in Isaiah chapter 7 and Revelation 20 or 21, I forget which one it is, 20, 21 or 22, Jesus says, I am the bright morning star. And the modern Bibles in Isaiah says the same thing for Lucifer. It says the son of the morning, they say the morning star, making Jesus and Lucifer and Lucifer and Jesus the same. That's the Bible you hold in your lap, the NIV. You want a Bible that calls Jesus Satan? Oh, no, 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 no. You got one. You want a you you want a Bible to put you back in the Catholic Church? Oh, no, 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 no. You got one if it ain't King James. You know why King James authorized the Bible to be to be uh, written and printed and all that? Because his family had been under the tyrancy and under the death of the Catholic Church, and he wanted to put the Bible in English for the common people. 
He was against the Catholic Church. The King James Bible is anti-Catholic. That's why he wants them change. Westcar. And there are churches and men out there, oh, pray for all the churches. Oh, no! I'm going to tell you something. The Muslims and the Catholics and the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons are all of Satan. I ain't praying for Satan. And I know one thing for a fact, the Catholic Church, I know it's of Satan because I came out of it and I studied it. I'll pray for the people, but I ain't going to pray for the church. If I'm going to pray for the church, it'll be an earthquake, fire, and storm. That building won't be there tomorrow morning. He was for baptismal regeneration, the salvation of baptism, infant baptism. That's not what we believe. They're having a big skunk right now. The skunk farted. A man said, we baptize you. Well, you're supposed to say, I baptize you. And now they're saying there's a whole bunch of Catholics. They don't know where they're going. They don't know where they are for those who have died in that wrong, I don't know, is that a pronoun? But the English grammar. From we to I, I think that's pronoun. So all the Catholic Church right now are all messed up about this one priest in one area of the United States. For all these years he's been saying we baptize, and he's supposed to say I baptize you. How about what the Bible says? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Bingo, end of story. And there's nothing wrong with you. can't get messed up on believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Ain't nothing about baptism. Ain't nothing about I and we, you. See, when you mess up with the Bible, you'll mess up your doctrines and you'll mess up your philosophy and you'll mess up your doctrines and you'll mess up your teaching. It'll just mess you up. Getting the right Bible, getting the right salvation, getting the right Jesus. He believed in the prayers for the dead. That's what the Mormons believe. For 50 cent candle, I got yelled at when I was in the Catholic Church. I don't know how, I was a little boy. I don't know how young or old I was. And, you know, the Catholic Church has the candle. I, I saw the little thing. I, I lit a, a stick and I lit a candle. Somebody come walk to me. Son, I said, yes. Did you put your quarter in there? I said, no. Uh, if you burn one of them candles, you you got you to gotta put a quarter in and not knowing that later on burning those candles was supposed to be for somebody. I just lit the candle because it was, there was one that was out. I, I was like, I was trying to help, the, you know, make sure they're all lit. That's for the dead. Because the Catholic Church is a dead church. And your Bibles, if it's not King James, is a dead Bible by a dead father. Who did not believe the Bible, did not believe in God, did not believe in the characters of the Bible, did not believe in the creation of the Bible, and he's just followed up and he wants socialism, he wants to take your money, give it to you. That's your father. I mean, what's the expression when I grew up? Who's your daddy? Here he is. West God. If you hold any Bible in your hand but the, but the King James, he believed in purgatory. The RSV. The really stupid version. You got the NIV, the nutty idiots version. Now watch this. In the King James Bible, I left a church over there. In Ormond Beach, Florida, I left the church. A King James Bible believing church. I left on this. I told the pastor so. 
In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. Understand that verse? John 14, 2, is it? All right, ERSV. The really stupid version. In my father's house are many rooms. Do you think God will give you a mansion or do you think he gives you a room in New Jerusalem? I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. And if I got the RSV, I can't sing for you. I hope, you know, when you get to heaven, the Bible says there was no room for Jesus. I would hate to. The NIV, the nutty idiot's version. My father's house are many rooms. The revised committees call this the verse, not the final state, but the transitional states before the final state of heaven. In other words, they're saying that the reason why we don't call it a mansion, we call it a room, because that room is purgatory before you get to heaven. My father's house is in purgatory? For Westcott, there's no heaven, remember? It's just a stopping off place. I've dealt with unsaved people. There's no heaven. And he's a communist supporter. That's your non-King James Bible. Mary. What about Mary? He would kneel before her statue. There would be a statue of Mary. He'd kneel before it. This is the father. One of them. Westcott, of your modern Alexandrian Western churches, Rome. I'm glad I got the King James Bible. And I pray that you will get rid of your modern Bible and get yourself a King James Bible and see the truth. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Like us. Subscribe to us. Share us. Get the word out. Have a good day.